In today's video, I'm super excited to be recreating an old video of mine, and that video is ranking every single music festival I've ever attended. Let's dive in. All right, fam, I'm about to rank all the festival's larger branded parties and conferences or well-known events that festival fans would like to attend or have attended. I'm so excited to recreate this video in an interesting way, and that is by using the very popular tier maker. Let's talk about the tiers and the categories so you understand what those mean. The first tier is going to be always and forever. So this is like you stole my heart type of festival. This is a life changing festival, a festival I'm obsessed with. This is a festival I will attend over and over and over again, providing I can get the tickets to that festival and it works with my schedule. So always going to be a stand with this one. Category number two is I adore you. This is like my heart is bursting type of feels. This is a festival that I love you a lot. I respect you. And I will probably suffer from severe FOMO if I don't attend. But it's not like the top tier. The next category is going to be friend zone, which is a never say never type of festival. So basically, I will never say that I won't attend again. But... I might attend again. I really, really like you and there's a chance I could attend again, but if I don't, I'll probably be okay. The fourth tier is going to be not my type. This is a one and done type of festival. The chances of attending again are slim to none. And then the last tier is crushing hard, which is going to be the tier for festivals that are on my radar that I would really like to attend. So I have a few of those sprinkled in here as well. Here we go. First festival that we have here is 10 Days Off. I feel like if 10 Days Off was still going on, I probably would attend this again. And I feel like it would have gotten much more massive than it was. But basically, it was just kind of like a warehouse style event that was in Belgium. Uh, specifically, it was in Ghent, Belgium. So if you're familiar with Bruges, Bel Belgium, that's kind of like a touristy city that people go to because there's all these rivers and canals and stuff like that. And Ghent is kind of one that's less touristy. And that's where 10 Days Off was. And it was basically a festival that went over a span of 10 days. This is day 10 of 10 Days Off. And what a night it's going to be. It is hot and sweaty inside. There is not a space on the dance floor. The balconies are full. It is the ultimate climax to an incredible festival. Let's get inside. I went on the final day and it was the second to last year that it happened. And I feel like the lineup was absolutely insane. It was Tale of Us, Maceo Plex, and Tale of Us was like in an earlier slot. I don't even think I saw them, honestly. I may have caught the tail end of them, but I would say I'm going to friend zone 10 days off. It's, you know, it's something that I probably would attend again. ADE, the Amsterdam dance event, I'm crushing hard on that event. That's a yearly conference, but also huge global dance event that happens in Amsterdam every year at the end of October. And I just haven't had the opportunity to go, but it's been on my radar for years and years and years. So I'm super crushing hard on that. Next one on here, ARC. Arc Music Festival I just attended for the first time. I'm going to put this in Always and Forever. Some people might be surprised by that because it was the first year I went and it's only a two-year event. But I feel like if I'm not going to Burning Man, I will be at Arc. I feel like that will be the festival that I will always go to if I am in the United States Labor Day weekend. So that's going to be an Always and Forever type of thing, I feel like. All right, up next is Base Coast. Ugh. Okay, this is a crushing hard festival because this is a Canadian festival that is entirely run and operated by females without any type of sponsorships and without any type of corporate 
sponsors basically and the lineup is always phenomenal and I've just heard the vibes are incredible and I discovered this festival through the podcast Life is a Festival with Eamon Armstrong when he interviewed the librarian who is one of the co-founders of this festival and she's also a DJ and heavily involved in the Burning Man community so I just I don't know I've been wanting to go to this festival for a long time so it's a crushing hard festival. Beyond Wonderland, Pacific Northwest. So at the Gorge, this is a crushing hard festival. Also, I absolutely like so have this on my radar. I need to go to the Gorge. I've never been to the Gorge before. I love Alice in Wonderland. This is like an insomniac staple, I feel like, Beyond Wonderland in California. And then now that they brought it to the Pacific Northwest, like, I have to go. Like, that's just how I feel. So that is a crushing heart event. Bonnaroo is next. Ooh. This is really hard because I only went to Bonnaroo for one day and it was on a layover. I had a 19-hour layover in Nashville and I rented a car and I went to Bonnaroo and it's a whole crazy story. I feel like if I could attend Bonnaroo again and like really truly see it, it would be like in a I adore you type festival like I feel like it kind of should be like in the I, I adore you because it's just such a legendary festival and like staple festival in the United States but because I only went for one day I feel like I'm friend zoning it just because like I'm okay with not going and like when I get there again is when I'll get there again type of thing the BPM festival <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. The BPM festival, I feel like is an always and forever festival, especially if it was still in Mexico. I could tell you a hundred percent that if the BPM festival was still in Playa del Carmen, it would be an always and forever type of festival for me. What's really good about BPM at the end of the day that there is so many artists, so many DJs, you know, going right across the board over the week or so of being here. And it's amazing that we have such a contingent of DJs coming over to do this. To put Mexico on the map, this was really amazing about this. This was like a life-changing experience, like as far as destination style music events for me. I loved this festival so much. I have not been to the Portugal one. I have not been to the Tel Aviv one. I have not been to the new one in Costa Rica. But since I've only experienced the Mexico ones, I'm putting it as always and forever just because, oh, God, I love that. I loved, loved, loved that festival when it was in Mexico. I don't know how I would feel if I went to the other destinations, honestly. I, I guess I'm going to have to try it eventually, but I want them to get a little bit more established there. All right, up next, I have Burning Man, which anyone subscribed to my channel knows. The great debate, is Burning Man a festival? Is it not a festival? I personally do not consider Burning Man a festival. However, when before I had gone to Burning Man, I did think it was a festival. And there's many people that do think it's a festival. And there's a lot of burners that actually call it a festival. And so it's this huge debate, is it a festival or not? I personally don't consider it one. But whenever I talk about my favorite events and festivals, everyone's like, oh, well, have you been to Burning Man? And I'm like, oh, well, of course I've been to Burning Man. But I, you know, I don't consider it a festival. But anyway, that is obviously always and forever, always, always, always and forever. There is no place on earth like Black Rock City, period, done, that's it. I will always, always, always love Burning Man and I will always try to go, but I don't force it. I never force it anymore. And there's a story behind that, which I will have to get into in another video. Up next, I have City Fox. So City Fox is a record label, but they also throw a lot of parties. And some of you may know them because they are the basically the reason why the Brooklyn Mirage was founded. So that's why I have them on here. And I'm going to put them in I Adore You because I feel like City Fox parties were a huge staple in my, you know, 
event career, if you will, I did not career, but my event life, I guess you could say. I have been going to the Mirage since the beginning. I've been going to City Fox parties from the beginning. I love City Fox. I adore them. And I feel like I have FOMO this weekend with their event going on and I'm not there. Coachella. Ooh, oh my gosh. Coachella. I feel like Coachella gets a lot of hate and it's just such an iconic festival. It really is. I was lucky enough to go for three years in a row for free with the amazing Awake Tours. Shout out Awake Tours. I was their Coachella tour guide for a long time. Um, I talk about it in my How Raving and Solo Travel Changed My Life video. So go check that out. I'll link it for you. But Oh my gosh. I feel like it's like somewhere in between the I adore you. Like there are definitely years where I get FOMO from Coachella, but quite honestly, I think I'm going to friend zone it. I haven't been in a long time. I don't know if I'll ever go again, but I'll never say that I'll never go again because it's truly an iconic festival. I mean, there's nowhere in the United States, honestly, where I've seen the talent that is at Coachella plus the large-scale art that they have there, plus the Yuma tent in general. The Yuma tent, like, they have a nightclub. It could be the middle of the day beaming sun, and you are in a nightclub at the Yuma tent at Coachella. I've never seen a festival do that. And then, of course, the Doolab stage. Oh, there's just so many iconic things about that festival, but... I wouldn't say I have FOMO every single year for it if I don't go, so I'm going to friend zone it. Crossed. Ooh, okay. Mm, I'm going to friend zone Crossed. This is a really great festival that I do want to go to again, but I wouldn't say that I adore it. I wouldn't say that I have FOMO every single time um, that it comes around. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those festivals where I would definitely go again. I, it's fully house and techno in San Diego, which is a beautiful city. It's on the waterfront, beautiful views, you know, lots of great things to say about it, but it's just not like up there for me. Day glow. <laughs> okay, that's a not my type. Although this was probably like the first electronic music festival that I went to that is now known as Life in Color, which was like where you wore all white and they sprayed you with paint, neon paint, and they had black lights and stuff like that. Just isn't really my type of thing, but you know, I'm happy I experienced it. Up next is Day Zero. All right, Day Zero. So many people are going to be surprised by this. I am putting this in not my type, which a lot of people are going to be shocked by that. But Day Zero is a one-day, 24-hour festival in Tulum, in the jungle of Tulum. And it's hosted by Damian Lazarus. And it basically is a spinoff of Get Lost Miami, which is a party he created 15 years ago for Miami Music Week, right? So Day Zero, it was its 10-year anniversary this year. I went because Departure Festival ended up getting canceled, so I went to Day Zero. And honestly, it was one of those things where I'm happy I experienced it, but I don't think I would do it again. They would have to fix a lot, I feel like, for me to go to Day Zero again just because it's a one-day festival. And there's nowhere to stay there. So it's like once you're in, you're committed, right? You can't like leave. So that's why I'm saying it's not really my type. Deep Alum Arts Festival. I'm going to friend zone that festival, although it is an amazing arts festival. And what's unique about it is it takes place in Deep Alum, which is an artsy area in Dallas, Texas. And it showcases so much amazing fine art and you can buy so much fine art, fine art prints, like absolutely talented artists, but then they also do have a lot of live music and it's completely free, but I would kind of consider it more like a street fair. Um, and I love it. And I, you know, I would go back if I could, I just haven't. So that's why I'm friend zoning it. Defected Croatia crushing hard. I have been trying to get to a festival in Croatia for a very long time and defected. I've heard nothing but amazing things. It's obviously by defected record label. So they have a lot of their defected artists on there. So you got a lot of that house, uh, melodic house, kind of like a beach party in Croatia. I still have not been to, so definitely on my radar. Next one is departure festival. Does this even count? It didn't happen. So it's like, I have it on here. I'm going to like, 
I'm going to just put it as crushing hard. Like, I hope it comes back. Honestly, I know a lot of people are probably like, fuck that. Like, you know, they screwed us. We flew down there. People flew from all over the world to go. That festival, though, would have been like, I'm telling you, that festival would have been like the old BPM days in Playa de Carmen if they got it to work. So I'm I'm just leaving it with crushing hard. My heart's still a little broken from it not happening this year. Up next, Desert Hearts Festival. Oh, man, Desert Hearts. I feel like I feel like Desert Hearts for me is like in between always and forever and I adore you. I'm going to put it as I adore you because I I love this event. Like it it just is very unique. I'm, I do adore this festival. I adore this record label. Up next is Dirty Bird Barbecue, and this, for anyone that doesn't know, Dirty Bird Barbecue was like the event, it was like the traveling event that happened before Dirty Bird Campout became a thing, and basically it was why Dirty Bird Campout was created, like why that festival was created. So this is like the OG of like the Dirty Bird stuff, and I'm going to put not my type and uh a lot of people just know why like it was just poorly run and there was a lot of stuff that happened and I you know that's all I could really say say about it okay up next is Dave Matthews Caravan which was a festival that I wish still was going on it was like a traveling carnival caravan where Dave Matthews headlined three nights in a row kind of similar how like string cheese headlines at hula like all three nights and at electric forest it was very similar but it was Dave Matthews and they had like a killer lineup with it just they had everything all types of electronic music live band so it was like multi-genre um I would put it in the friend zone I think that if they still had it around, it's not that I would never say never. I think I would go again. Okay, up next is Don't Trip Camp Out. I Adore You. That's going to be an I Adore You festival, of course. Um, so I went to Don't Trip for the first time this year, and I, I know I need to go back next year. This is just like an amazing multi-genre festival. It takes place on a mountain at a ski resort in Beaver, Utah. It's very like nature Everyone knows I love the nature festivals. It has every type of music. The production is fucking killer for a new festival. The vibes are amazing. Just the, the type of crowd that's there. I just absolutely love it. So definitely I adore you and I would definitely have FOMO if I couldn't go to Don't Trip. Up next is EDC New York, which is going to be not my type. Uh, I went to EDC New York when it first came to New York in 2012, and it just was not up to par with EDC production, EDC standards, Insomniac standards, period. It just was not there for me, and it actually led me to try new festivals that were happening the same weekend because it happened you know, during May, like the middle of May, and so I just never went back, and then they kind of never made it in New York. I just don't think there's enough room in New York for EDC to bring the production value that their that their fans are used to because New York is like you know all tight spaces and they just really didn't have the room and it just didn't really work EDC Orlando okay this for me is like in between like and I I adore you and friend zone okay Right now, it's and I adore you, and I'm going to have extreme FOMO this year because the lineup for me is phenomenal. There's just so much incredible house on the lineup, and it's like already big enough for me in Orlando for me to have that EDC experience without going to the one in Vegas. Okay, up next, Electric Forest. No-brainer. Always and forever. Always, always, always and forever, Electric Forest. Forest family knows. Every time I... In that forest, I like look around and I'm just like, I don't think I could ever miss this. This place is literally bonkers and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like I've gone since 2014 to forest. Next year, it'll be 10 years from the first time I went to forest. Like what? It's so insane. Like I want to get a back 40 cabin for my entire family. I want to bring my mom, my sister, my uncles, like her brothers. Like, I'm just like, you all need to see forests. Like you need to understand why I keep coming back here. So always and forever, always, always, always and forever forest. Izu. 
I'm gonna friend zone Izu. It just was never my thing. You know, Izu is very like, it's a smaller, like ravey type festival. Definitely have has the rave vibes with like candy trading and incredible electronic music acts from like all across the board, depending on what genre you like. And I will say, they have new stages now and the new stages this year looked phenomenal absolutely incredible like looked like killer so I will never it's not like friend zone right never say never I'm never gonna say that I'm not going to ease you again but I could like live without it all right elements festival I adore you <laughs> I, I don't care what the haters say I adore you elements festival is to me, an incredible festival, okay? I love the people that go there. I love the production. I love the talent. I I just, I love this festival. And there's a lot of people that hate on it because of what happened in 2021, and rightfully so. But I never experienced that with them. And every time I've gone to an Elements event, I've had an amazing time. So that's an Adore You type festival. I would have FOMO if I missed Elements. Okay, next is Elro and Elro is kind of like one of those parties that everyone knows about now. At least everyone knows about it now. Um, it's a Spanish brand, Spanish label, incredible artists, incredible talent. And they're really well known for their parties with confetti and inflatables and like insane production and all that. And I'm going to friend zone Elro <laughs> just because a lot of times that I've gone to the events here in the States, I've kind of been disappointed and I think that truthfully I would just like to go to an Elro event in Spain where it was founded where it's well known for and try to experience it in another country in the country where it was formed and it might change my decision okay up next Envision Festival I adore you I love this festival I love I love Envision. I feel like it's one of my favorite international festivals. Envision to me is like a hybrid of a lot of festivals that I just enjoy. Like, you know, it's in the jungle. It's on the beach. They make a lot of their stages out of materials founded in the jungle and they're pretty sustainable. It's a festival that is really clean and I enjoy the panels that they have. I enjoy that the the atmosphere that Envision brings and the culture and I just love Costa Rica and yeah, I adore you of Envision. I just I just adore you. Okay, Farm Aid. Farm Aid, I am putting in the friend zone. This is an amazing event, honestly. It's like a charity event that supports family farmers in the United States, and it was founded by four major artists, Dave Matthews, John Mellencamp, Neil Young, and I'm missing one. Of course, I'm missing one as I'm recording. I can't think of it. It'll come to me. But they always they always headline, and then they have amazing talent going along with it, and it happens in a new location every year, so it's usually like a one-day event, and it happens in a new location each year. Um, around the United States. It's an event that I like and I and I love the vision of it and, you know, that it supports um, farmers in the United States. Get Lost Miami is going in I Adore You. <laughs> uh, Get Lost is, is Crosstown Rebels, Damien Lazarus party that has been going on now for 15 years during Miami Music Week and I went to 20 hours of this party out of the 24 hours this year, and I absolutely loved it. I, yeah, I mean, there was a few things that they have to fix, but for the most part, I feel like I would have FOMO not going to this event now that I've gone to it. That's just how I feel. All right, Groove Cruise, duh, always and forever. This was a life-changing festival for me. It just brought me in touch with so many amazing people that I still go to festivals with. I love Groove Cruise. I love the venue. Obviously, nothing beats being on a cruise ship. It's like an adult playground. You know, you sail to beautiful destinations. Half the time, the destinations don't even matter to me because of the people and the talent that's on the boat. It's just, it's just incredible. The theme parties are incredible. It's like, my top festival electric forest and group cruise are my top festivals so always and forever as long as i can go i will always go to group cruise 
Hangout Fest. I'm going to Friend Zone Hangout Fest. I would like to go back, but it's not like I have FOMO each year that it happens. You know what I mean? Um, it's a great festival. It's on uh, the beach in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Gorgeous festival. It's a city festival, so you could stay in a hotel. Multi-genre. Um, it's one of those multi-genre festivals where I feel like if you're over doing Coachella or Bonnaroo, try hang out because it just it's it's a little bit different, you know. Up next is Harbor Life. Harbor Life. I feel like oops. I feel like Harbor Life belongs in I Adore You and or like Friend Zone kind of. I'm going to put it in Friend Zone just because I haven't been back. It's an Australian festival that takes place in the botanical gardens on the water. And you could see the Sydney Opera House and the Sydney Harbor Bridge and it's house music. And it's like a one day festival. And yeah, it, it was just so it was it's so amazing. When I went, it was the lineup was like Mark Farina, um, Flume, Too Many DJs, Flight Facilities, like incredible lineup before like anyone really even knew, I feel like, oh, who a lot of those people were. I mean, Mark Farina has been in the game a long time, but flight facilities and like flume were like, I feel like just like, I don't know, starting, <laughs> you know, to get big when I went and just so, so like amazing vibes definitely would go back. Up next, I have this little tile is space. It says space Ibiza, but really it just represents like Ibiza parties in general, because I feel like lots of dance music fans want to go to Ibiza. And I've been fortunate enough to go twice and have two different experiences both times I went. I am going to friend zone it, though. I'm friend zoning Ibiza just because I feel like there are so many more beautiful places and parties that I would want to go to. It's expensive. It's expensive. And I feel like it's just changed. And I, maybe I don't know because I haven't gone in a few years. Um, but I just feel like there's other things on my list to see. I do think that if you're a dance music fan, you have to try it out. Like, of course, you have to go. NOLA Jazz Fest, I am friend zoning. I like this festival a lot. I love the culture that it shows of NOLA. Like, it is obvious that the NOLA people, like, really pour their hearts and souls into this festival. And, like, I learned so many things about NOLA. And there's just so many amazing bands and live acts and incredible performances. And it goes on for, like, two weekends. And it's just a great festival to try out. Um, there was just some things that I didn't really like about it, which kind of led me to not go back, but I'm not saying I would never go back. It's just not up there for me. Lightning in a bottle. That is crushing hard, <laughs> like super crushing hard for the longest time. I love the Doolab. I love anything the Doolab does. Their production company that kind of builds stages and, and structure designs that that act as art shade structure and basically like a performance venue and I discovered them at Coachella and their festival is lightning in a bottle and it's one of their festivals so I would really like to try lightning in a bottle out Miami Music Week that is going to be always and forever type vibes for me Miami Music Week and Ultra changed my life. Honestly, where's Ultra at? I'm just putting it up there. So many people will probably be surprised by that. But Ultra and Miami Music Week absolutely changed my life. It's like what got me into going to dance music festivals. I feel like I went to Ultra when it was in its prime, like when it was the best time to go to Ultra. So I will always and forever like love that festival. I haven't been back in a few years, but I just did Miami Music Week again, and I was like, damn, now I know. Now I remember why. <laughs> like, I love this, these events so much, right? Up next is Movement. Movement is an I adore you type event. I need to go back. Like, I just feel like I struggle to go back because it's Memorial Day weekend, and there's so many festivals that happen that weekend and things that are happening that weekend, so... I just love movement. You can't be being at a techno festival in Detroit where techno was created. And it's just a very edgy, like kind of urban city that 
I love and I love the actors there and I just loved everything about it. Mystery Land USA. I adore you. <laughs> I wish it was still happening. Oh my God, this festival was incredible. I wish it was still going on. It probably would be like an always and forever type thing, honestly, if it was still happening, but it isn't. And I mean, yeah, just, just look it up. <laughs> it's just, it was incredible. It was so small, easy to get around. It was in Bethel Woods where the original Woodstock location was. You had all the hills. You had the hill of death that you had to climb up to get to mystery land. But then once you got there, it was like so immaculate, the art, the stages, everything was just, I loved it. Wish they still had it. Northern nights. Okay. Crushing hard. This is like a festival to me that I feel like I've known about for years. Always want to go. It kind of reminds me like similar to what Shambhala and the Canada would be, but it's in California and you camp under, I think like these giant trees and it's in a forest and it's on a lake and just, I just know I would love it. I just know I would. So it's on my radar. Okeechobee also on my radar, just dropped a killer lineup. I almost feel like I missed Okeechobee in its prime, though. Not sure if it's still the same. I don't know. Crushing hard still, though. Sensation. Oh, my God. This was amazing. I'm going to put I'm going to put sensation in. I adore you because sensation white when it came to the United States. It I feel like no one had ever seen production like that ever. Like back then, I feel like in 2012, no one saw the production like that. There was these big giant balls like that lit up that fell from the ceiling that moved. The stage was like a lotus flower that had a waterfall around the DJ that said the DJ's name and the DJ spun around and everyone wore white and it was incredible. And I need to go to Sensation in the Netherlands. I just need to do it. I need to go to where it started because the one in the United States, the first year that it came was immaculate like oh yes I have FOMO when I see sensation you know flyers and stuff like that so that's an I I adore you for sure Sonus is a crushing hard event another Croatian festival that I just absolutely need to go to Stereosonic not my type that was Australia's premier electronic music festival. It toured around all the major cities. And I went in Perth and I just felt like the vibes were not feeling it. So that's not my type. Hula. Hula's an I adore you festival for me. Um, I'll put it here so that it breaks up that white a little bit. Hula is like an amazing amazing festival like I honestly do you have FOMO not going this year if you're into Halloween and you're into multi-genre and you love electric forest and you just like those type of vibes where you have multi-genre and you're in nature the Suwannee campgrounds are incredibly large incredibly insane you have all the Spanish moss trees you have live bonfires at the campgrounds there's so much cool stuff and then Suwannee like the lake Spirit Lake is just incredible with the type of art that they have there the interactive art incredible festival Definitely adore that festival. Definitely have FOMO if I don't go. But it's not one of those things where I'm like, I need to go every year. SXM Festival. Oh, my God. Some of these are really hard for me because it's like kind of like mm, in the middle of things. I'm going to put SXM and I adore you because SXM was one of these destination style festivals that really gave me a chance as a smaller independent creator and I went to their like their first two years that they ever started and I feel like I need to go back and I do feel like I have FOMO when I see other people going and I feel like I need to go back to see how they've made improvements and you know they've had struggles with hurricanes and they've made it through and they just they had struggles with 2020 that year too with the airport closing down and I just feel like they keep pushing through and yeah I definitely adore that festival. See get the Island of Freedom. I'm going to put not my type. I personally just didn't have a good experience at Seaget. I mean, I don't really see myself ever going back there, but it's basically in Budapest. It's a, it's a multi-genre camping festival in Budapest. So they have great acts. I just personally didn't have a good time there. 
And it was like for personal reasons, like, but yeah, just don't see myself going back there. The Roots Picnic. I am going to friend zone the Roots Picnic. Um, it's not like I would never not go back there. I always look at the lineup every year, if I'm being honest, because I love the Roots. They're one of my favorite bands, and they bring a lot of amazing talent to their festival, which is Roots Picnic, which usually was in Philly. I feel like I would go again, um, but the year that I went, it was just like amazing. Like Nas was on the lineup. It was just so incredible. So um, yeah, but it's not like I have FOMO when I miss the Roots picnic, you know what I mean? So I'm friend zoning that. Time warp, ooh, I'm gonna friend zone time warp just because it's a full techno lineup. I do love techno, but like I went to the United States one. I feel like I wanna try the one in Germany, um, you know, in Europe. I wanna go back to Europe and try time warp there, but they, you know, I don't feel like I'm going to have FOMO missing time warp. It's they just dropped another USA lineup here in Brooklyn. And I just don't think I'm going to have FOMO not going to it. It's just it's one of those like warehouse vibe type festivals. Like it's not like there's art and other things to do. Like it's just strictly techno. So if that's what you're into, you'll definitely love it. But it's just, you know, mediocre for me. Tomorrowland always and forever that's like an amazing incredible festival that if I had the money and the funds and the time off in the middle of summer to go every single year I absolutely would <laughs> but I just you know it's just one of those things where it's very hard to get tickets very expensive to get tickets and I mean it's just a life-changing event that if you're a dance music lover you absolutely even if you're not a dance music lover you really should just go to Tomorrowland just for the experience it's absolutely amazing I'm really hoping to go back next year because it will be 10 years from the first time I went which is crazy I've gone twice 2013 2014 and incredible 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 festival always and forever if I could always and forever bands warp tour I'm going to that's in between like friend zone and not my type it's like probably not my type anymore because it's all like punk rock but like Back in the day, I was so obsessed with punk rock and I would listen to every single band on that lineup from Thursday, Taking Back Sunday, you know, everything like that. Like, it was incredible, but I just haven't gone a long time, so I'm going to put Not My Type, but it was the first festival I ever went to. <laughs> the Winter Music Conference, I'm going to put Not My Type, and some people might be confused by this because basically the Winter Music Conference is very... Like, it coincides with Miami Music Week and Ultra. Like, those three events kind of, like, are all intermingled. But Winter Music Conference truly pertains more to the music business side. If you're a DJ or producer, I definitely think you would love the conference. But for me, since I'm not a musician or a producer or a DJ, I didn't really benefit from it much um, besides getting to meet Cascade and interviewing him. That was, like, the best thing that happened to me. <laughs> But um, it's just like not the conference for me. So I'm putting not my type. X Live, friend zoning X Live. Um, I love X Live. I feel like I would go again. It gave me an opportunity to speak on a panel. It's a great festival conference if you want to network and meet people. But, you know, there's other festival conferences I want to try. And it's just, I don't have FOMO if I don't go to it. You know what I mean? And the last one on here is Zomna, which is going to be crushing hard, okay? I almost went this year, but I went to Day Zero instead, and I kind of wish I went to Zomna. But Zomna is a crushing hard event. It takes place in Tulum um, that I definitely want to try out. It's been, like, on my radar for a while. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it took forever to do this. I didn't think it would take that long. I would love to know how you would rank these festivals. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was entertaining and a little bit more visually fun for you to watch. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and that's it. Peace.